Now that the last wave for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course Pass has been released, we finally know which tracks remain unused and weren't granted a second chance. I want to talk about some of my favorites. Tracks that are still stuck on their respective console. Tracks that never returned. I will exclude Mario Kart 2 in this. I personally don't count it as a mainline title, so let's just get you out of here. And start with the first track. What a beautiful track. The sunset, or is it a sunrise, uh, looks spectacular. Cheap Cheap Island doesn't necessarily offer much more than that, but hey, look at that horizon. O okay, it does offer a bit more. A monstrously humongous fish, for example, crabs to dodge and wooden bridges to cross. Artistically, it's impressive, and the course layout is fine enough. Welcome to the craziest course ever. Might be the hardest one as well. Rainbow Road on GBA is pure mayhem. You can fall at any slight curve because guardrails were swapped for bounce rails. I'm honestly not sure if this track should return, but goddamn, bouncing all over the place, skipping large chunks is unbelievable. I'm just not good enough to pull it off. So let me show someone who is. And now imagine 12 people trying that in online multiplayer. I always liked city tracks with cars driving along the streets. Nothing tops Moonview Highway. But Mushroom City from Double Dash comes pretty close. The city clearly isn't safe. Bombs, careless drivers and an adorable wiggler bus can get you at any second. It's thrilling to evade them even if you sometimes need insane reflexes. The track has two overlapping streets that meet at an intersection which has a double item box. You could also drive through a narrow alley that isn't on the map. A secret passage. I really like the atmosphere with all those shining city lights. So bright you can actually see them from space. A map so long it only has two laps, but so fun I wouldn't mind it having the full three. Vario Colosseum is incredible. I don't like Vario Stadium from 64, another track that was never brought back. I don't mind Vario Stadium being stuck on N64, but Nintendo's second try at a Vario themed track deserves all the praise it can get. It feels like a high stakes roller coaster with the care for safety you would expect, which is none. No safety except for some guardrails here and there. It's action-packed with many jumps and remember, back then we had no trick system that was first introduced in Mario Kart Wii. So nowadays those jumps would be even better and sprinkle a few anti-gravity parts in to up the insanity and this would be one of the very best tracks ever. I cannot believe Toad's Factory is still stuck on Wii. This might be one of my favorite Mario Kart tracks in general. The setting, the factory that produces the very item blocks we shatter all the time, run by Toads. The whole thing is just well put together. I especially like the part where the normal crates are turned into the item blocks. You can either drive the risky middle and maybe get crushed, choose the safe road or snatch an item traded with some slowdown. They put one set piece after another. We get to see the docks where the finished blocks are transferred, ride a winding assembly line, followed by a big jump that's accented by blinking red lights, coughing steam pipes and a loud alarm siren going off. And after traversing the muddy ground outside, you're back at the start. Toast Factory has it all, plus a great soundtrack. It's a shame it was never picked for the retro track selection.
but we aren't finished with Mario Kart Wii yet. The Special Cup's Bowser's Castle is one of the best from a huge number of Bowser's Castles. The atmosphere is foreboding and creepy. I love the warping flowing hallway at the beginning that makes good use of the trick system and the tight curves for drifting. The big set piece comes in the middle when a gigantic Bowser statue spats fireballs at you. Man, Bowser must really love himself with the number of statues he puts around his castles. Anyway, well, we have seen something like this before on Nintendo GameCube. Also a Bowser's Castle track that never returned actually, but I don't like it as much. We have seen something like this since then as well in 8. From all those I think this one is the most epic and fun. You have many different options to get through it, a bit like the part in Toad's Factory I talked about. And the fire gazier is... Hmm. Gazer. And the fire gazer at the end are the cherry on top. Daisy tracks are often among the best in their respective games. Daisy Cruiser? Great. Daisy Circuit? Top. And Daisy Hills? Maybe not as great as the other two, but a fantastic course nonetheless. It's so idyllic and relaxing. I would live in Daisyhausen if I could. Even the mountain goats are smiling. You start in a small village, drive up a hill and then fly down into town. Many Mario Kart 7 tracks end with a flying section showing off a big vista and this is one of the nicest views we get. The hot air balloons that you can bounce on, the windmills you can squeeze through or the strung together houses whose roofs you can land and drive on. Just an enjoyable track with a chill atmosphere. Well, Nintendo is nailing these Wario tracks now. What better theme for a new mechanic like underwater driving than half-sunk shipwrecks? The course constantly switches between underwater and above water segments, giving you a lot of trick opportunities. Anchors swinging like pendulums try to block your path and crabs scuttle around the ocean floor. I especially like this part where the path divides and you jump into a tight curve to drift. It's one of those tracks that still feel unique and special. Straight out of the Arabian Nights, Shy Guy Bazaar's setting is really cool. The nighttime makes it even more distinctive, because there are only a precious few courses set at night anyway, and they use it pretty well. The moon shines among a star clustering dark sky, lanterns guide the way and the end celebrates with fireworks. Also, shy guys are just great. These creatures need more courses themed after them. Oh, yeah, the standout Mario Kart 7 courses I would say. Using Woohoo Island from Wii Sports Resort to build two long checkpoint races, so no laps instead sections. Woohoo Loop lets you circle around the entire island driving on the road at first with other cars, then along the cliffs. Maka Woohoo is the improved version of exactly that. You don't loop around, rather climb a mountain up to the top. The scenery is drenched in orange because the sun is setting and the vista at the end might just be the sweetest of them all. Both tracks are fantastic, individually, but combined they are basically perfect, providing everything Mario Kart 7 has to offer. Shortcut opportunities, some underwater segments, many flying segments, set pieces and immense variety. I've been excluding Mario Kart Tour because I don't care about that game, but a handful of courses in my list were brought back for Tour at the very least. Woohoo Loop and Maka Woohoo weren't even remade for Tour. They are really stuck on 3DS. That's it, we reached the end. There are more tracks that never returned, but these are some of my favorites which I'd like to see come back the most. Maybe next time when Mario Kart 9 releases in 2030 or 2031, they get a chance to shine again. Until then, thanks for watching.